Hannah Hawkes will. Today we'd like to say a big hello to our friends in America from the Yorkshire Dales in England, especially to our friend Andrea McCarthy from Osterville. Today, Andrea, you're looking at Hannah Hawkswell's house. This is a tribute walk to Hannah, who was the quiet Yorkshire lady of the Dales in the 70s. We're going to start our walk from the car park. So we're in the car park now, free parking, toilets just on our right hand side. So we head forward now, turning left through the gate at the head of the dam. As you can see when you go through the gate, you've got picnic tables. So we're heading forward now, past the fishermen, walking with the wall on our right hand side. You're walking with a taxi driver today in the Yorkshire Dales. I won't be giving too many directions today. Basically, we're just walking around three reservoirs. I want to try and tell the story of a gritty Yorkshire lady who lived in this valley 45 years ago as a blizzard raged in the remote corner of the Yorkshire Dales a solitary ragged figure battled against the bitter wind to lead a cow to shelter aged just 46 but with the striking white hair of a much older woman hill farmer Hannah Hawkswell had spent more than a decade alone at Low Burke Hat Farm eking out a meagre living from its 80 acres of land she had no wish for fame and had never even watched television. We go through the gate on our right and just keep following the reservoir. Her harsh, uncomplaining life, a thousand foot up in Bouldersdale, where the fields were blanketed with snow for many months of the year, became a nationwide focus of attention. When in 1973, a TV documentary revealed the details of her stoical existence. That someone could survive alone in such brutal and simple conditions without electricity, running water or flushing toilet was thought quite remarkable even at the time of broadcast 45 years ago. Yeah, when you compare her life then compared to the soft life that we lead today such an impact did the program make at the time that it went on to produce a further three documentaries and even an invitation to Buckingham Palace. This long and cold winter Hannah died at the age of 91 still pining for a Spartan home after exchanging the farm for more modern creature comforts in the late 1980s we keep going crossing over the tiny bridge and walking at the other side most people in the 1970s didn't have a clue that someone like Hannah even existed explained John Farley the producer of Too Long a Winter the documentary catapulted Hannah to sudden fame. Not only did Hannah exist, but she was an extraordinary character with an openness of speech. We're heading forward to the right hand side of the second one. It's only tiny. We go through the gate, heading forward. In front of us, we've got Blackton Reservoir. We're at the side of the reservoir now and that's looking to our right and again as you can hear there's a bit of breeze but you'd expect it in the dales it's very warm well we'd just like to say thank you to Sue and Phil 
for putting us right as to where Hannah's buried at Rommel's Kirk. We thought she was buried at Barnard Castle, so they put us right. Thank you, Sue and Phil. See you again. Oh, we just keep heading forward through the gate. Hannah and her family moved to Low Burkhat in 1929 when Hannah was just three. But seven years later, tragedy struck when her father William died. Hannah learned to work the land with her mother Lydia and Uncle Tommy and while the house filled with elderly relatives all had passed away by the time Hannah was 34 in 1961 leaving her to tend the farm alone. This is how she was living with one milking cow and two calves when Yorkshire television researcher Barbara Twig tracked her down. Hannah, she discovered, was living on £280 a year if things went well. That's just looking left. Across the lake, there's Hannah's old farm at the back of the wall. Barbara said the first time that she saw Hannah she was there with her rosy cheeks in a tatty old raincoat held together with garden twine. Barbara said she invited me in for tea. She had to get the water from a bucket outside her front door before boiling it on a coal fire. The water was nearly as brown as the tea itself, but she said I drank it. The coal fire was Hannah's only concession to comfort. The one expense she refused to economise on. Otherwise, she read by the light of an oil lamp and used an earth closet as a toilet. A budget, a budget of five pounds, which came from the annual sale of a bullock, and by renting out some of the land to neighbouring farms, brought two loaves of bread, white for her, and brown one for a cat, milk and eggs, and one tin of spam. And two chickens were delivered once a year from the man who did the haymaking. This is the view that Hannah will have seen thousands of times. We stood right at the side of the wall in front of Hannah's house now. Every day she woke up, she'll have seen that view. And at this time of year in summer, that's absolutely beautiful. Just at the side of the house, you've got a bird viewing point. Just in front, there's a bridge. We'll be coming back over that. And at the far side, at the back of the bridge, you've got another reservoir. We go through a wooden gate and then turn immediate right through a metal gate and then we turn left over the stream. We're heading towards Hannah's Meadow now. This has been done up a lot since Hannah left but while Hannah lived in it her clothes are washed in the local reservoir which is just to the side while plastic bags containing her food supplies hung from the rafters away from rats. Her only entertainment was an old organ, which she played beautifully and had a battery operated radio. We cross over the cattle grid, walking up the tarmac road, passing through Hannah's meadow. Hannah herself was full of charm and very well read, although she never married. She was very ladylike. She never wore makeup. Her main thing was just to be a warm person. The TV company started filming in the bitter winter of 1972. After one session filming in a helicopter, the cameraman's limbs were so stiff, he'd been locked into a sitting position and had to be carried to warmth and safety. Hannah was used to the conditions but admitted 
she hated the terrible winters which came too soon and stayed too long. And here we are, you can see the flowers in Hannah's meadow, a tribute to a lady who lived a gentle life in the Dales a long time ago. And as we walk up the track, we can see a field full of flowers, never touched by fertilizer, just left to grow as they should be left. At the gate, we turn left on the walk boards, heading towards the farm. And there's two plaques here. And on our left hand side, we've got a sign saying, Welcome to Hannah's Meadow Nature Reserve. Hannah's Meadows are dedicated to a, a gentle lady that lived in a different time, even from her own time of 1970s. She lived in the past. But 45 years later, everybody still remembers Hannah. Her memory lives on in the meadows. The path goes round the front of the old barn. There's a seat there and you can go inside. We're going to have a look. Well, as we look inside the barn, there's a plaque on the wall that says, Welcome to Hannah's Meadow, Nature Reserve. This barn, meadows and pasture, were once part of a farm owned for three generations by the family of Hannah Hawkswell, who lived at Low Burkhat Farm without the luxury of electricity or pipe water. Hannah managed her land without the use of artificial fertilizers or pesticides. She farmed the fields for hay and pasture using traditional methods. This helped to maintain the abundance of wildlife that had evolved here over the centuries. In 1988, following Hannah's retirement, Durham Wildlife Trust bought the meadow and pastures. There we are, maybe an old stone milking parlour there, we don't know, but that'll be a few hundred year old that. And this is where Hannah did her day-to-day -day work. And there's a couple of iron rings off a wooden cart and just various old farming instruments. And that's up on the wall. Well, we're off outside for a cup of tea now. And as we look out the doors, I'm sure that's a view that will have been familiar to Hannah through her working life, but without the tractors. This is a good place for a, a cup of tea. And as we're sat above Hannah's Meadow, having our cup of tea, let's just show you the view. You can see why this was Hannah's life. To Hannah, this was the best view in the world. So we had a quick look in the barn and a cup of tea at the front, but we walk back left and head up to the farm and then we turn left through the gate. This farmhouse was built in 1741. Keep heading forward through the farm. As you walk round the back of the farm, you'll see a barn on its own and the stile straight over the wall and turn left. Within a couple of minutes, we're at the wall. As we cross over the stile, in front of us, we've got the reservoir and the car park at Boulder Head, but we're turning left, downhill, following the wall. Within a few minutes, we see the tiny track and the base of the dam. We turn left there. We turn right over the bridge. That's just down below as we, as we cross the bridge. This is a beautiful valley. 
in summer. At the wall we turn left and head towards where them people are. We cross the bridge through the gate, we go through the gate and just keep heading forwards following the footpath sign on the Pennine Way. That's looking up towards Hannah's Meadow and the barn where we had our cup of tea. But as we look to our right hand side, we see Hannah's old house or farm. Today, this is a fabulous place, but in the winter, it's many a time covered in snow with temperatures plummeting to minus 15 degrees. The response to the show was amazing with countries around the world bidding for transmission rights. The phone lines at Yorkshire Television were jammed for days. The lanes around Hannah's home filled with tourists hoping to catch a glimpse of the unlikely star. Bulging sacks of letters poured into Yorkshire TV addressed the old lady in the Yorkshire Dales. Hannah's newfound fame had little impact on her lifestyle. She steadfastly refused to leave the farm. Money was spent on more cattle rather than home comforts. But it did, however, give Hannah the opportunity to take a glimpse of a rather different life. One of many invitations she received was to a prestigious Woman of the Year lunch in 1977. It was Hannah's first trip to London. We've crossed over the wall, bearing slightly right towards the stile. As we cross the flower meadow, there's the view. As we cross over the stile, we head straight forward, crossing over the bridge, and then bear left up the track at the other side. Within a minute, we go through the gate and we've got a sheep there, look. Just stop it in the shade because it's very warm today, even though it is a bit breezy. That's the view to our left hand side, which we walked up earlier. This is an absolutely fabulous part of the Dales, but uh, we can imagine in winter, terrible. But in summer, fabulous. In the next field, we turn right, head into the top left hand corner. Just before we do, there's the view. And just before we go any further, just one quick look at Hannah's farm. So we cross over the stile and keep heading forward. We've got a farm on our right hand side. In London, Hannah marvels at the 100 mile an hour train ride to King's Cross station and chats away amiably to the Duchess of Gloucester. Most overwhelming was Hannah's stay at the Savoy. She admitted shedding a tear at having to leave such opulence and return to the farm. During one four day power cut in 1978, everything in the house froze, including the glass holding Hannah's false teeth. And even the coat on her back, which had got wet while she hauled fodder up to the cattle in the top field. She was forced to bunk down with her favorite cow, Rosa, to keep warm and drink her milk almost straight from the udder. She said, I would go straight to bed after finishing my work with all my clothes on, including uncle's old tweed coat and socks. But she concluded the hardships produced a wonderful spirit in the community. Everybody helped everybody else. We keep going. We just keep heading forwards across the front of the farm. 
as we go through the gate we bear slightly right up towards the buildings we're in the field at the front of the buildings but that's just looking to the rock formation at the back just keep heading forward we can see Hury Reservoir on our left so we're in the next field now heading towards the trees just at back of the trees you've got a house and a track we're passing the house now heading up the track at the road we head straight over towards the telegraph pole just on our right hand side but ultimately she found London very lonely nobody said hello as they would in Yorkshire she said it's nice for a while but not on a permanent basis I would need to be quiet and get back to the hills Hannah never married or even had a boyfriend baby peewick here just below us in the grass the baby peewit about three feet away we can hit mother above us we're going to leave it for now then we don't disturb them she claims she never wanted children but instead thought of her animals as offspring even giving her cows names such as her ladyship Rosa and puddles by 1988 Hannah who by then was taking tablets for angina concluded that she could no longer live safely at Low Burkhat farm she moved six miles to the village of Cotherstone her new cottage home had central eating hot running water and even a phone in 1989 a winter too many Hannah made a tearful departure from Low Burkhat farm her face was white and wet with distress Hannah's farm went on to be sold last year for 546,000 Hannah's film career continued with a trip to Europe in 1992 she was then accompanied on the QE2 to New York before a tour around the US Hannah in America one of six books she published we just keep heading forward through the walls crossing over the front of the dam back to our car Hannah never returned to Low Burkhat farm spending the last years of her life quietly in a nursing home in West Auckland County Durham although she enjoyed being able to watch life pass by outside a window she always felt nostalgic well here we are in Rommelskirk and as you can see this is a beautiful village so we keep heading forward past the pubs and the church downhill for about half a mile we've come to Rommelskirk cemetery now let's see if we can find Hannah's grave so uh, we're having a look round now and here we are at the graveside of Hannah Hawkswell but to give Hannah a full name she was called Hannah Bales Tallintyre Hawkswell she died the 30th of January 2018 aged 91 years Hannah left a legacy to a life that found beauty and even the harshest of conditions wherever I go and wherever I am this is me she declared the day she left the farm there's nowhere like it today Hannah lies in the churchyard with her parents at Rommelskirk but her heart will always be in the meadows at Burkhat one of her sayings was to me there's nowhere like it and never will be this is my life my world <laughs>